Do you ever catch yourself saying something online that you probably wouldn't say in real life? I'm looking at you, internet trolls. Got something bad to say to me? Come at me, bro. Come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We don't get trolls on our videos. Y'all are all great. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Like for example, my name is Miles with the Y, Bess, B-E-S-S. -S. And I got into a little altercation with the guy because his name was Miles with an I, B-E-S-T. So I was talking trash. I just kept tweeting. I'm like, there can only be one. I'm better than you. Get off Twitter. Now I was the aggressor in the whole situation. I probably wouldn't have done that if I had to see him face to face, but I was online and I felt protected by the internet. I think we've all seen how online conversations can quickly take a turn for the worse. Just look at any time a woman posts anything on social media. There's always somebody commenting about how she looks or how she's doing something wrong. Kinda feels like it's super easy to be mean to each other online. So today we're asking, is the internet making us mean? So it's a real thing. The internet really can make people act differently online than they do face to face. Researchers call this the online disinhibition effect. You know that little inner voice in the back of your head that tells you something might be a bad idea? Well, the internet can kind of shut that voice up. You might end up saying or doing something mean that you'll regret later or sharing something that's a little TMI. There's a lot about chatting online that's pretty different than talking in person. And it's these differences that can lead us to do things online that we normally wouldn't do. One, anonymity. Two, lag time. And three, lack of nonverbal cues. Okay, first, let's discuss anonymity, which by the way, is one of the hardest words to say in the English language. And an 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 never mind. A lot of time we're communicating online, we're anonymous, which means other users don't know who we really are. This is especially true on forums or anonymous apps. And this lack of accountability can make us feel free to do or say whatever. We're less worried about real life consequences because no one knows who we are. So you might just be saying stuff all willy nilly. But on the other hand, you could open up about personal stuff that's bothering you. Next up is lag time. When we're communicating online and on social media, it doesn't always happen in real time. There's often a delay between when we post something and when we get a response. And this lag time can lead us to say more impulsive stuff. We can just post something and bounce and not really worry about the consequences. Finally, let's talk about how there's a lack of nonverbal cues online. So even if you know who someone is online, you can't always read their body language, facial expressions, or tone, which gives you super valuable information on how they may be feeling. Without these cues to respond to, you might not self-censor as much. Like if you're talking to someone face-to-face -face and you can read that they're unhappy or bored or indifferent to what you're saying, you might choose to shut up. But online, you don't have those cues, so you'll probably just keep going. Side note, this is exactly why we need a sarcasm font. It's gotten me in trouble way too much. Surveys have found that 40% of adults have experienced harassment online and 66% have witnessed it. And 59% of teens have been harassed or cyberbullied. Not cool people, just be nice. So for better or worse, the internet really can make you act differently than you would face to face. 